to do a motion move, the first thing I want to do is I want to identify the joint that I want to be rotating. So I'm going to say that this rear, uh, rear to lower pole is what I want to rotate around. So I find that move in the tree. I right click and I select quick copy. Then I open up my copy and I change the type to motion automatically jumps to the motion tab. I want to rotate this component. And I'm going to go negative 50. Usually there's some trial and error for figuring out what the beginning and end step should be. And I'm going to go in two degree increments so that we get a nice range and get to see. So because I've copied an existing joint, I don't need to change any of the features or move parts. It's automatically using those same features as in my original coincidence joint. Um, so that's a handy shortcut. So if I nominal build and de nominal build, first thing I get is an error. And so if I want to see, try to figure out what where that error is without having to read that all that text in that warning message, I go to the Vergier Freedom Counter. And I say, hey, my hard stop move is still active. Well, I can't rotate this length and restrain it to the hard stop at the same time. So that's when I say, oh, doy, what was I thinking? I go turn my hard stop move off. Then nominal build again. And now I'm back to a perfect degree of freedom counter. And I can see that my new motion move is doing the exact same thing as my old hard stop move. It's restraining one degree of freedom of the rear hinge. Now if I want to deviate, uh, the deviate is a little choppy because I've got all this GD and T on. So if I go into my mechanical modeler tools and pick up kinematic animation, now I can smoothly step through the um, through the motion with nominal parts. It's a little slow because I picked 61. 61 steps through yeah. the move. And because we're running the webinar, it was running like 10 times faster um, in, in the rehearsal. The streaming video. Yeah. But if I, it does have the option of going backwards to the motion as well, which is kind of handy. Well, and you can show them, you know, you can mm -hmm. change the steps super quick. Mm. Yeah. So typically, when I'm working with motion moves, I use a large number of steps for graphical deviation, and then when I get down to simulating, I'm using a much smaller number of steps. And that's because when the simulation occurs, uh, and we use the kinematic simulation tool available in the same area, it's actually running a separate simulation for each step of those and then it saves all those histograms for you and combines the results in a handy CSV table um, that lets you actually, you know, instantly use Excel to create charts and uh, graphs showing how your variation. Um, if this was running a little faster, I would run one to show you that as the hinge moves toward the closed position, the angle variation between the upper and lower surfaces increases. So my, my variation can be controlled tightly in the open position, but it gets really um, large in the closed position, which is probably the opposite of what, uh, what we want for this product. 
So hopefully everybody understands what uh, what you just described by saying 13 steps and using the kinematic simulation. You are essentially yeah. running a simulation with that hinge built in 13 different positions. Yep. Yeah, this is what they run. So instead of running a regular simulation, which would only use the first step of the motion move, this actually repeats it with all 13 steps. So with a push of a button, we can uh -huh. we can put this in multiple positions and get simulation results. So the last thing I want to talk about is the over constraint of this model. Put it back. Yeah. So I want the 